Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another historical human's heritage and today we are going to the island of Sicily. Fresh off our most recent podcast about the emirate of Sicily, we're going to be talking about the architecture styles and all the beautiful designs implemented here, right? Yeah. Uh, specifically, we are going to be looking at the Arab Norman uh architecture in palermo which has made its way onto the unesco world heritage Ooh. Um, yeah uh so these were uh uh the, these um sites uh that have made this listing are actually a collection of two palaces three church churches a cathedral a bridge as well as uh two cathedrals located outside of palermo one in Silafu and the other in Montreal. Wow, so they really did it all. <laughs> um, and this is yes. just stuff that survived. There's probably stuff that was destroyed. Yes. Oh. Um, these, uh, yeah, these nine structures all date to the Norman Kingdom of Sicily, uh, specifically 1130 to 1194. Uh, and they feature a unique cultural blend of Byzantine, Muslim, uh, and Roman uh, architecture, uh, as well as experiencing influences from Jewish, Lombard, and French culture. Yeah, I guess the Norman, they're Norman. They did come from France, after all. I mean, you can see, we talked about it a lot during the podcast episode, but one of the big uh, design elements that you see is the traditional, more Arab, um, arches with the pointed ends versus the more traditional Roman half circle shapes. So like yeah. in some of the pictures that they have on the UNESCO page, there's an image inside a church where there are those arches on top of some beautifully ornate columns. Yes, those are Corinthian columns, which are Roman. Uh, the arches are... Uh... You know, are Arabic, and the mosaics we see on the walls there are, of course, in Byzantine style. Wow, so Ooh, Byzantine mosaics blend. Um, if there ever was one, and honestly, unique intersections of historical cultures is basically an entire UNESCO World Heritage category. Uh, that's the big reason why these are all on the list. It's because they are all. Uh, beautiful examples of what happens when you take multiculturalism to the nth degree it just... and the norm the normans really said you know what they're doing some good things <laughs> better who are yeah. we to stop good things you know we we'll just let them keep doing their things you know hey so, would you guys like some funding <laughs> yeah it's it's almost as if they it's wow. almost as if they were at the crossroads of a dozen cultures and said you know you all do one thing really well what happens if we all do one thing together? <laughs> We're all in this together. Oh wait, that might get Disney to sue us. Yeah, don't yes. get us caught. I don't even I don't even know where that's from or what that is, and I refuse to acknowledge anything otherwise. But it's really cool seeing some of the designs, like seeing the columns at the end of the um, the columns oh, under the end of the arches, and like there's a couple of courtyard images where you just see rows of the arches spanning down, and it's just mm -hmm. it truly is gorgeous so does it say that the those because did they actually steal those columns from like other sites or did they like no, actually make them, in the them style? after it no, okay because they, no, no, they did do that yeah <laughs> sometimes no, no, no. yeah no that's not what the normans were interested in doing what the normans were interested in was taking other things and using them in a new way okay. i also really think we lost the art of murals like I think that's both really beautiful, but I would love to walk into, like, a shopping mall and look up and just see artwork all over the ceiling. Yeah. We should just bring back mosaics, too. Yeah, while we're exactly. At. Yeah. Instead like, of just seeing them in gentrified neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you think, what do you think the Normans were doing to Palermo? They were they gentrifying, gentrifying it! <laughs> Are you telling me the Normans oh, were gentrifying? Well, let, let's think about it for a second. If we go back to our uh, podcast, which you definitely listen to, the Arabic buildings built by the Emirate were modest and of simple uh, stone make. The Norman buildings, for this exact same purpose as the Arabic ones, were very grandiose, as we can see here. <laughs> mm. 
God damn. Ooh, it's the same city, <laughs> the gentrific everybody. Gentrification goes back so far in the English bloodlines. <laughs> yeah. Start, it, it didn't start with the English. It started with the Normans. Yep. The Normans. Yes, the, the, Norm the Normans. But yes, it's, you know, it's an innovative reuse of existing features from several different cultures to make a unique blend, which is why it is on the uh, World Heritage Site. I don't think you can dispute the value of that to the human race. Um, I'm sure someone has tried. Oh, well, and it's only have. one of, what, three known locations where this kind of intersection really happened between, yes. like, uh, Islamic culture and Catholicism in in uh, true earnest. Because we talked about a little bit about the Moorish occupation of Iberia. Yep. There was the um, occupation here in Sicily, and then there was obviously the stuff in Jerusalem itself, but... yeah. It's just interesting seeing the two at a crossroads because you can obviously tell the design elements apart. Yeah, and especially when you get that Byzantine mix in there. Oh, just cherry. Yes, yes it's uh, yeah. That, that's that's one of the things here is because this is really the this is really you know the three sects all coming together because it's Byzantine Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism, and you know uh, Islamic uh, you know Muslims. You know, I think there were Sunnis people. still at this point. Yeah. Probably. If I remember correctly. I just yeah. am really admiring the murals. Like, I really, I think we're missing yeah. that as, I think that's where society started going wrong. Yeah. Well, we ditched murals for billboards. Yeah, for real. Yeah, well, I don't know. I want, I want, I'll want. i pay for a mosaic <laughs> instead of a billboard. Yeah, technically these might not be murals because I think for it to be a mural you have to paint it onto the wall, whereas the mosaic is, uh, you know, Little yeah, mosaics oh, are in like yeah. going semantics. Yeah. No, it's very it's, important. It's, it's a different form of wall art, Justin. It's very important. But yes, you want wall art. <laughs> yes, we I want pretty wall, wall art. art. Just, Justin is a wallpaper person. The more you know. God, you must have really hated the '90s and all the beige. It's still better than the wood paneling of the '70s or the shag carpeting walls of the '70s. Actually, might, let's, uh, the house let's I grew up in had that. Had the wood panel about about keeping uh, these wonderful buildings safe because as much as we are all in love with them, it is important uh, to uh, you know you know to look at you know what's being done to you know maintain them. Thank God, there's no wood paneling or beige. Yeah. I mean, they were given the highest level of protection under national legislation into under the 2004 Italian Code of the Cultural and Landscape Heritage. Plus. And what? You know, it'll keep going. Yeah, I was going to talk about the local stuff. That's where it gets really oh, weird. Oh, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. So um, these are all different uh, buildings, churches, and palaces. And um, they are in several different areas, which means they fall under numerous different religious and local governments, which means that for the protection that's not at the national level, they've uh, had to create uh, a couple of interesting... Uh, uh, buffers. Uh, the first is getting several of them individually declared national monuments, which allows the national government regulation to take over for everything. Uh, several others have created what is known as level one and level two buffer zones, which is a Ooh. series of, of uh, regulations that's you know effectively state you know with buffer zones um, is typically you know you can't build anything within this area that might alter you know the viewpoint from the monuments. Well, with the layering of the buffer zones, they've all come to unique agreements about what can and cannot be done within certain uh, measures and certain directions of the building. So, like, there might be a limited area where nothing can be done, and then a further area where only certain alterations can occur. And they've created a you know, sort of a unique chain link uh, uh, around the, the building that way. Honestly, I like that approach. Yeah, this is the first time we've come across layered buffer zones. Maybe they should have, the, the English could learn a thing or two and, you know, not build a highway under Stonehenge. Yeah. I know that's still upsetting to you, Aaron. I will yeah. never forgive them. Yeah. Uh, additionally, the Italians do it right, y'all. Yeah. Additionally, um, they've actually created a, um, uh, a, you know, 
memorandum of understanding, which has created a management plan to sort of unify the governance of all these properties uh, as they are under a single listing on the UNESCO heritage site, which means that a loss of UNESCO viability for one could mean a loss of all of them from the register. Oh, that's so scary. they've got a uh, you know they've got that extra layer of um, protection going on of just you know all of them just at the local le level just quick everyone close hands, link arms. They're yeah. gonna ah, uh, they're really beautiful though. I wish I could have got to go visit that part of Italy. And yeah, and with, with Justin's point earlier, yeah, the highest level of protection under national legislation in Italy is. Well, it's higher than in most nations. I think it's, I believe it's definitely higher than in the United States. <laughs> they they do it right. They just, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The entire island is a national, let's be honest, all of the entire nation is a, a national heritage site. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, like most of Europe probably could, uh, like, have, like, just has so many surviving monuments. We probably would have more in the States if, you know, land developers didn't just like to bulldoze over things. That's right. I'm going to talk smack. I'm going to talk some smack about our own country. Look at the Italians. They're doing such good things. Uh, the number one risk to these sites is, um, uniquely enough, it is not anything to do with tourism or humanity, but it is to the fact, but it is due uniquely to the fact that they are located on the island of Sicily. Well, I'll um, say Enna's there, yeah. right? Uh, which has been ha which has been. Uh, has number one threat identified as seismic activity from Mount Etna. I was going to say, yeah, like, yeah, wasn't Mount Etna there? I was like, yeah. Is it yeah, still? It is, I didn't yeah. think it was still active. Yeah. Um, the volcano may not be erupting, but earthquakes are a problem. Fair, fair. Uh, Sicily has been devastated in the past by uh, the single most uh, dangerous earthquake to ever hit Europe. <laughs> So, oh, uh, that's right. The seismic activity on the island is the number one threat to these. So it's the yeah. exist the fact that it's on Sicily makes it a threat to its existence. Yeah, because the African plate's pushing upward into the Euro into the Eurasian plate, right? I'm not that well versed on the nuance of plate tectonics, but probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I don't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Europe is pushing into anything at the moment i think it's oh no start. like i think it's like it, it, the african plates pushing into the eurasian one is what it is yeah or like going under it something like that yeah. there's a fancy geography or uh geology term for it yeah but yeah i think that's about all there is to it Interesting. just put just like put just sur right. just wrap the churches and everything and bubble wrap you know it'll be fine <laughs> just predict the earthquakes get the bubble wrap uh well on uh that very protective note i think that's a great place for us to leave off this has been a really cool tie into our podcast episode so we thought it'd be a nice homage and a great little plug so if you haven't listened to the podcast go check it out it should be live on our channel by now and uh thank you guys for watching <laughs>